Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. It has become somewhat of a tradition that at the end of the year during the holidays period such as right now at the end of 2022 we'll go into ASCII or command line or terminal related projects and this year is no different. This year we're going to look on how to telnet into our 43 year old MBS 3.8 something that came out in the early 80s, uh, end of the 70s, without any TCP IP and still be able to telnet into an MVS and get information out, look at data sets, etc. So this is what today's video is about. But before we get that, let's switch to the commercials. To every secretary who ever asked why centering a line can't be automatic and why setting up columns and indenting and underlining and erasing too can't be automatic. To all those secretaries, IBM says, wait till you get your hands on this. The new IBM electronic typewriter. So automatic that while you fold the letter, it types the envelope. Now that's automatic. And we're back from the commercials. So um, what do you see here? I have a couple of terminal windows open to my Unix system, even though, of course, I'm recording on Windows because of uh, video recording software reasons. But um, I'm connected here to my U Linux system. And as you can see here, I have, let me make the font a little bit bigger. Uh, I have here a repository called CTC Mainframe API. Now, what is that? Uh, this is new software developed by well-known um, mainframe community uh, developer and member, uh, May Matthew Wilson, who developed new software that allows you to interact with MVS through, through the channel-to-channel uh, -channel adapter, which, of course, uh, MVS and Hercules uh, support. So let's look into that. And this is Matthew Wilson's GitHub page. I've done a number of projects with him that you may remember from uh, my channel and even from his channel. Uh, one, of course, is the virtual 1403 uh, printer, which he developed. Um, but uh, our idea, so um, you have a printer uh, with an agent that you connect to your emulated mainframe. And I have a video on this. And then your uh, output is being emailed to you in beautiful uh, uh, historically correct uh, green stripe or blue stripe paper with 1403 font. Uh, the other one is this uh, Zilinux uh, scripting system. It's a system that we developed together where you launch a script and then after an hour or so, anything from 90 minutes to hours, you have a ready-made Linux for the mainframe. Ubuntu for the mainframe and then I think there's one more thing oh yeah he developed this proxy 3270 based on my uh, feedback and uh, and um, encouragement so that you could uh, proxy many um, 3270 connections through one of several connection points and I've also shown all these things that I just mentioned that I've shown in my videos but what's of interest today is this new project news project that um, uh, Matthew started, which is called uh, CTC Mainframe API. And it's very, very interesting uh, code software. The reason is that what it does is that you run, a part of that is run inside MVS on uh, MVS 3.8 on top of Hercules. And the other part is run on anything that can run a Go program, either Windows or Linux or something and then they talk to each other through the channel to channel adapter that's what ctc stands for um, used to also be called uh, 3088 that was the device number from ibm but it's well better better known as uh, ctc channel to channel adapter and of course mbs supports that hercules supports it and by writing very intelligent and very nice code uh, matthew makes it possible to connect uh, to the operating system inside Hercules uh, to MVS and then get data sets out, uh, read data sets, and soon also even uh, submit jobs and uh, edit data sets inside, um, inside MVS from outside, from Linux or from Windows, from anywhere you want. So um, here, um, everybody can go to his webpage, to his GitHub page, Racing Mars, 
CTC dash uh, mainframe dash API, and and then you download this repository, and then you connect it to your MBS. In this video, we'll show you how to do that, and it's actually fairly easy. It looks more complicated than it really is, but then we'll look on how, based on this, I wrote a telnet system that allows us to telnet into MBS. So I use this as the basis and it's still work in development. It's not finished yet. Uh, this is very experimental according to Matthew as of uh, December 26, uh, 2022. Um, but he says um, he's still working on it and more and more features are gonna be added. And there still may be the occasional bug, but it's it works, and so based on that, then I work on I, I developed on top of that a telnet system so that you can telnet into MBS and get data sets out, look at um, look at data sets, etc. So that's what we're going to look and do in this video. It could be maybe a little bit of a longer video if you're um, if it's too long, then you can skip forward or just look at the end result. I will post at some point my own code into a repository. It's not ready yet. I will maybe make a second video when I have it ready to post, when I have a little bit more functionality inside my Telnet uh, uh, system. But it works. It works from Linux. It works from um, Windows, from anywhere. It could even be put on the internet, exposed to the uh, world, world wild internet uh, that's all that's all fine but i'm going to grow with uh, capabilities in my telnet as matthew grows growth in uh, grows in capabilities inside uh, his uh, ctc mainframe api code so let's do let's uh, get this started so of course we want to obtain the repository and uh, i've already done that here so it's this window here on the left and if you look at the structure, you have um, a CTC server. Okay, um, that is that is written in um, in uh, API uh, in Go. Sorry, <laughs> I'm typing and talking at the same time. Uh, as you can see here, copyright 2022. This is very recent code. This is from the last few days. Um, so. He uses the channel-to-channel -channel adapter um, as a socket device, obviously, from the outside, from outside Hercules. And inside Hercules, it's just a, a device, and uh, um, MVS knows how to talk to the channel-to-channel -channel adapter. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to compile this. Uh, I have Go version 119, and I'm running here on Linux on AMD, but this could also be Linux on uh, on the mainframe, this could be Windows. So let's just say build, <laughs> oh, that was fast, um, and it builds. Um, so obviously now it has nothing to connect to because we need to obtain a Hercules and make the modifications uh, to the configuration file that uh, Matthew is requesting us to do. So let's go look at Hercules, the Hercules site now. So I should have here. Uh, okay, so um, here's my Hercules. If we look at the configuration file, uh, here it is. I've inserted just two um, new devices. That's uh, channel to channel adapter on device 502 and one more on device 503. This one is for command and this one is for uh, receiving and sending data. And if you go to the, to look at the code here, oh, server, which we just compiled, um, we look at the config JSON sample that's provided, which is which is the one you can use uh, as your uh, main one because uh, this one works perfectly fine. We see here command remote port is 15, uh, 1620. And of course on this side here on the Hercules side, that's the local port and here it's the remote port. 
and the remote port is uh, 50,600, so that's correct. And then for the data connection, you have 15, 6, and 30 here on Hercules. Hercules is as, at the, as the local port, and here is, it's seen as the remote port versus the local port on the on the Linux side or on the on the Go program side is 15,610, and here it's remote. So they're kind of mirrored, uh, cross mirrored. And, uh, and that's fine. So why don't we start this and uh, get Hercules going. And then what we need to do as next is make sure we copy um, the MBS side over and compile this assembler program. But first we're going to look into the source code itself and then we'll see how to get it compiled on MBS or assembled, I should say. So pretty much the same thing. So. Um, Hercules. Okay. Uh, let's see that we have the devices. Yep, here they are 502, 503 um, on 15,620 port in the year 1630. Now let's IPL this bad boy. And it's telling me here specify uh, system parameters. That's already the nucleus. Now let's make this a little bit bigger. Um, continue and it's off to the races so now that this is running this is quite a fast system I uh, don't remember exactly I bought it about three years ago I almost never use it um, but it's very fast okay it's an AMD Ryzen 3950X um, which I'm sure today there are already much faster ones, uh, but uh, it, it's. I compile a Hercules, full Hercules system here in about 35 seconds. All right, so this is up and running. We should now be able to connect with our terminal. Um, connect. Yeah. And let's log in. And we're in. So, uh, as I mentioned, now the next step is oops, to um, get this code here. All these members build, copying, debug, index, member list, CTC serve, DS list, run, and read. All those need to be uploaded to uh, MBS. You can either use the built in FTP server if that's what you want, or you can do it through the uh, card reader if this is uh, your favorite way or you can use the terminal upload whatever suits you just make sure that uh, you upload it as ASCII because this is this stuff is all in um, in source code format so now I put this into um, Herc01 source CTC as you can see here um, you can put it wherever you want but I just uploaded it there. And now let's look at uh, what we got here. So uh, build is what builds, obviously, um, the, the, uh, the binary, the executable. And uh, for that, it needs to know where to take the source from, which we specify here, and where to put the uh, uh, module on. Um, the load module goes into a Herc01 test load lib. And let's go look at, I mean, this obviously source code is a fixed block, um, 80 bytes uh, length records, obviously, because this is source code. But as you know, load modules need to be specified uh, as, um, let's go look. Do one test. Oops. What happened here? And here it is. So this is um, a, a PDS, but it's um, it's uh, not fixed block. It's um, um, the U stands for uh, right now. I remember, but it's uh, basically un um, unformatted, and um, and that's how lot modules need to be because they're not in eighty by uh, uh, length records 
and so that's why it needs to go in there just make sure you have something that can accept the load module and now let's look at the source code the first one is ds list um, that's the code that matthew wrote that is able to extract uh, uh, file names it's kind of like a file browser similar to this one if you go to 3.4 and you say herc01 as you know uh, it shows you all the ones that start with herc01 and then the volume the organization the format uh, record length and block size etc so that's called ds list and he has a source code that is able to extract all that from um, from mbs obviously it needs to access the catalog um, and so let's look at the program here this is all written in assembler 360 370 um, there, uh, let me see if i see any 370 um, uh, code but uh, this will compile very very easily on uh, on s uh, on our mbs 3.8 um, as you can see here um, this is how you write to the uh, channel to channel adapter that's the that's the instruction here um, and then let's see what else happens uh, so it writes to the channel to channel adapter okay and then uh, it goes over the data that needs to be sent and uh, sends it and of course he needs to um, he needs to build his own uh, channel control words which needs need to be in fixed storage it cannot be in virtual storage because when um because when the answer comes back um when those need to, when the channel control word needs to be accessed it could already be swapped out so it cannot be swapped out um, so it's actually very simple it just reads and writes to the the it reads the um, the data that you want needs to i'm just reading here that it needs to send and then sends it over the channel to channel adapter and let's look at member list this is able to extract a list of members uh, from from a pds so it gets the data site name from the from the command input area which is being passed to it by the go program um, okay and I guess it uses QDAM or BPAM And then here he builds his own um, channel programs, which are then put on the CTC. Has some error catching, some sanity checks. very nice so um, and then there is the read which is able to read from a data set either partitioned or sequential and then sends it again over the channel to channel adapter since um, here he has a little bit of a protocol implemented so okay so that the other side the go program knows what's happening so this is the there's a, as we mentioned, saw before, there's a command channel and a, a data channel, and he separates those two things, so it doesn't have to uh, interleave the data with uh, com commands. That's probably smart. Very good. So let's uh, see how to compile all that. Um, so there's a build program, and then there is a run program. Uh, the build 
obviously I'm going to call it Arc 01B. Needs uh, uses the uh, normal assembler we have in MVS 3.8, and then we tell them the source code is here. Uh, Herx01 source CTC, in my case, depends on where you upload it to. And then the, the members that need to be assembled. So CTC serve, DS list, uh, this is all going to be um, assembled into one load module called CTC serve. Um, and that's why we need the linkage editor in this case. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so let's try to assemble that. Now that we've uploaded it, let's sp split screen. Um, let's go look at, at uh, the job. So this went well, all zeros. That's already a very good start. The module name is, of course, CTC. Um, Okay, so right 20. And that's this went all without errors. And so it assembled every single module and then the linkage editor in the end is supposed to link it all um, to one load module. So yeah, here it is. All these were then um, written as CTC serve. Yeah, here it is. So that's fine. Let's go look at uh, Herc01 test load lib. Uh, it should be in there. Yeah. And this is a mine program. Um, um, I actually wrote a while ago the uh, the mine uh, program where you you know we need to click until uh, you find the mine. What is it called? Uh, mine game. And I wrote it in assembler, so that's why I have it here. But this is what we looking at. Um, and so uh, now that we got this assembled, we know it assembles. The next thing would be now. To run it, uh, to run it, we have a run, a little run uh, job here. CTC serve, I call it run CTC. We say the load lib from where to take it. The program is this one. Now, um, one little thing is that the regions as specified in In the source code are a little bit small. As you can see here, Matthew specified 128, um, and he's using his own self-gent MVS. I'm using TK4 here, so 128 maybe runs for him. For me, um, it wouldn't run, so I give it uh, 528. And by the way, the same thing with build. Uh, he uses 128. I gave it 528 because I have the memory, and uh, why not let it? Uh, uh, use the memory that it needs. I'm sure that for him, uh, he was on his system was fine with 128. If you look at, uh, uh, he builds it here with 128 kilobytes and I build it with 528. If I run, try to run it with 128, it will fail. Um, okay, so uh, let's go back and run this bad boy. We could, of course, make a procedure out of this and put it in the proc lib, but uh, for now we we'll just uh, run it like this. And we should now see CTC serve. Yeah, it's here, it's running. And now comes the fun part. So now what we can do is uh, we should be able now to just connect our CTC server that we built. Uh, did we build it? Uh, yeah, as you can see here, uh, we can now put this kind of in the background. Uh, the MVS is not so important anymore. We're going to do now all the work on the 
Linux side. So as you can see here, this handshake successful. The, you know the, the protocol that we mentioned before, and it started an HTTP server on localhost 8370. So now comes the fun part. Um, so now I have here. I wrote a little um, system, which I call TK4 Telnet. So um, if I as an example now, uh, all this. Let's see if this runs. Okay, so uh, start server, and now this starts a Telnet server on port 2400. I could start it on port 23, which is the standard, but then I need to be root, and I don't want to be root right now. But then we could just put it on port 23. Um, but this, you know, port 24 works just fine. And uh, let's bring up now this terminal. And say telnet localhost 2400. As you can see here, this is now on the same host, but uh, this is the telnet server responding to us. It says TK4 telnet, welcome to MVS 3.8 telnet server. And uh, I log in. I don't remember the password that I put in. Hmm. Yeah, so if I put in the wrong password, of course it will say that's wrong. Um, let's go and Should be see you later. But uh, so let's make that the password. Okay. So, um, again, perk zero one. See you later. Okay. So now we're in. Uh, we're now. This is the, the part that I have written. Um, the whole server part and uh, and the capability to connect to um, to uh, Matthew Wilson's code. So. Uh, we have here a couple of possibilities. You can see here we have, so far we have uh, a couple of commands implemented, help, which just shows this help here. Let's make it a little bit bigger so it's easier for you to read. Um, then we have uh, CLS, which just clean, uh, clears the screen. Then we have uh, LS for um, show directories, show the content of a PDS. And then uh, cat shows the content of a PDS or a sequential data set. CD, so we can change into a PDS. And we have VI for editing a data set. And then exit just logs off. So uh, let's start with Herc01. And, um, and this now shows you all the Herc 01s, just like DS list, as I mentioned before on MVS. But now we're actually, we could be telling in from Windows, from anywhere in the world. Um, this is, uh, if you press Control C, of course, you get out of, uh, of the Telnet host. So it's pretty safe. Uh, okay, so, and very fast, actually, as you can see. So it gets us a list and uh, test load lib, which we just looked at before. So you can see here, it's in volume pub 01. Zero, uh, partitioned organized, a record format U, the block size for load modules, and a record length, of course, zero, because it's all just blocks. Um, and uh, then we can say, for instance, uh, um, oh, here we have a salaries input from a previous video I made. So cat perk zero, zero 01 salaries input. And it will show me the content of the file. So um, we could also edit it. Right now um, we can edit it, but we cannot change it back to MVS. Um, I'm waiting for that capability to be implemented by Matthew. And then once we edit it, then of course the next step is then to submit jobs and retrieve jobs from uh, from this pool. 
all that uh, I think Matthew is thinking of doing or is in the process of doing. We can change into a data set. Um, and so these are just the first few commands um, that I have implemented. Uh, and then of course in the future there's gonna be a submit. Uh, there's gonna be um, maybe a retrieve a job or something. So we can go crazy here. So now let's see how the code works. Um, so if you go to take a four telnet, I have here uh, um, a telnet program, um, which um, is able to accept a connection through, so we need to first, uh, I think we first need to look at uh, this part here, shell funk. So there are, this is a, a number of functions that I found here and there on the internet, which are able to correctly emulate a Telnet server. So it's compatible with Windows Telnet and uh, Unix. It does all the control characters. Uh, you can um, recognize special keys like control keys, etc so that actually you can work inside something like Vim over this Telnet program. Uh, and it's all written in Bash. And so all I do here is I uh, call certain functions and, um, and then um, SF uh, TN read, Telnet read, will wait for input from the user. Um, once we have the input then, we can uh, verify things and then uh, uh, you know I store which directory we're in, which PDS we're in, in case we change that. And then we read in the command and for each command such as uh, uh, clear screen, directory, ls, cd, cat, etc. Uh, vi, uh, make directory is not yet implemented. So for each one of those cases, I implement the code. Now uh, here's where the interesting part is. So let's look, for instance, at uh, ls. Where is ls? ls, of course, needs to do, where is it? Uh, ah, here it is. So ls needs to do a DS list, as we saw. So what I do is first I obtain the uh, the high level qualifier that we need. If we don't have one, of course we can't get anything. Then we do a, a curl, as per instructions on uh, the web page or the GitHub page from uh, the repository of Matthew Wilson, and I give it the high level qualifier. Then we need to parse the JSON, so we get the name and the dataset organization. And then I start to remove all unnecessary stuff, such as uh, braces, um, um, quotes, everything that we don't need uh, is being removed. Uh, as you can see here, this is a pipeline with how many stages? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's how I format the output exactly like we saw before. Um, so it takes a couple of stages. The same when we do a cat, um, that's a little bit easier because it just dumps whatever it's inside the, um, the data set. Uh, when we do a change the change directory, it needs to change into that um, into the PDS, etc, uh, etc. Et so this is all done with uh, curl and then parsing the JSON and doing stuff with it. It's actually not difficult at all uh, once you get uh, and if something is wrong we get a control C or something like that then of course um, we cut the line and the user is out again. So not an exit of course uh, will exit the the, the, the talent connection. So um, I think that it's it's uh, it's easy and very extendable. Uh, by the way, the password can also be made um, into asterisks as an option. Um, 
and uh, what did we have? Where one cell? There it is. Input. So here it just takes it exactly as it is. Of course, it needs to do the EPSIDIC to ASCII conversion, which it does. And um, here you see the result of this 10 or well, how many stages was it? Nine or 10 stages um, pipeline in, in Unix. Uh, we formatted exactly the way we want it. Uh, and there's no uh, limit uh, to the imagination here and the possibilities. We, we can do really uh, anything. Um, anything is possible um, uh, so it's very extensible and what I'm going to do is as Matthew um, provides more and more um, functions in this uh, very exciting new project of his I will be adding more and more functions to my telnet server as well and make it available in a repository in the near future so that you can take it, extend it, or use it as your own talent. So what is the value of that? The value of that is that you don't need to, uh, you don't need a talent server to, um, to just read, write, um, submit jobs, and read output. Yeah, you can, it's still, I think, nicer, and I'm very fast in working on the 3270 emulator, but um, if some people don't have the um, don't like the 3270 emulator because you need to learn a little bit how it works or just prefer to work from the terminal uh, this could be a very nice uh, way to do it especially as Matthew keeps adding new functionality and um, so, so let's see what he plans to do limitations uh, there's no security yet. that's a big limitation uh, because um, he hasn't tested this with RKF, but I did. <laughs> and uh, and since Herc01 uh, is the one that started CTC serve, uh, that has access to everything. So it really depends how you start the, the how you start the load module on the MVS side. Um, so you can see after a while, Telnet just closed the connection because I didn't use it for a while. So all that is already part of my uh, Telnet server side. Um, of course, um, there's no support for on-catalog uh, data sets. Um, actions involving data sets that span several volumes are not tested. <coughs> Sorry, yeah, I haven't tested that one either. The only public interface is HTTP. Um, doesn't do any input validation. This program to assume that column code already takes care of this. So I do very minimum uh, validation right now, as you saw. I just make sure there is a high level qualifier. Otherwise, we just get a result. So I mean, let's test it. Um, if I do uh, x0 10, or 10, which does not exist, then I get. Um, 08 code so it didn't find anything in the in and the, in the catalog which is correct it's a correct error message um, but so there I, you know it's all depends the, the Matthew Matthew's code expects that you do all the validation on the client side so that would be the talent server side in my case uh, let's see what else he expects to add So recovering from problems, yeah, sometimes you need to vary the device off and on again for it to work. I experienced that myself also. Um, this should work with Hercules 3.13 and Hyperion. And he used to say here what he plans to add, but I think he removed that. Uh, oh no, here it is, to do. Um, job submission, which I'm very excited about because now you can edit the job inside the Telnet server and submit it. You don't need to, you can use Vim or Nano or whatever you want to use. Um, writing just uh, a data set, so uh, taking a data set, writing and um, and putting it back on, into MVS. Get job status output, um, uh, list online volumes, and more. So there is. This is very exciting. So the more he adds of those stuff, the more this becomes 
uh, powerful because then we can add submit, we can add edit, we can have a view uh, job status and uh, list volumes or whatever. There's more and more that we can add and I'll make this open source so you're, you're uh, welcome to add more and more yourself and I'll accept of course pull requests once I upload it. So I plan to make a second video once we have more capabilities. In the meantime I'll, con I'll continue working on this talent program, make it uh, more resilient, more error checking, more um, uh, checking the input before we send it to, uh, to MVS as uh, Matthew specifies here on his page. But so far I'm very impressed and very happy with this. I think he did an outstanding job and deserves uh, a lot of praise for this. Um, and um, I think it just shows again, you you know, you release stuff into the uh, community and there is no limit uh, to what the community will come up with. Uh, uh, when you have gifted developers such as uh, Matthew, the, the two folks who created the Brex, or ported the Brex to MBS such as Peter Jacobs and uh, and uh, Mike uh, Grossman and uh, more and more people there's no limit uh, and we have here a 43 year old operating system and we're still adding ca modern capabilities to it uh, today in 2022 and very soon in 2023 so uh, I am really happy with uh, what's going on here and I know that similar efforts are happening on the VM370 side uh, maybe a little bit slower there um, but uh, on the MBS side it's happening very very quickly imagine what would happen if IBM ever released uh, a 31-bit version of MBS to the community we could do much bigger things one of the things by the way that I have been um, always looking at the last couple of years uh, I just need more time is there is a Unix called Zainu uh, and uh, it's a very small uh, Unix that uh, will fit into 24-bit, so into uh, into 16 megabyte. And somebody started porting that to MBS. So if you port Zynu into MBS, you have something very similar to ZOS USS because now you have Unix inside MBS as an address space. And uh, and then once we have that, of course, we have uh, TCP/IP. We have uh, a, a very good ANSI C um, uh, compiler and more. So I think uh, if I had a little bit more time, if I had like three, four months of that I could spend every day on this, I would probably pick up Zynu and port it to MVS so we could have full Unix inside MVS. And then of course we could have a very simple uh, way to have a Telnet server an FTP server, a web server, many things inside MBS itself. So I think um, that would be my project if I if I had a little bit more time, but I have uh, a job or at least one job that takes all of my time and uh, I travel extensively. So I just cannot take this project on right now. But, um, but since we don't have Unix or TCP IP inside MBS, uh, we resort, resort to things like this. And uh, I think, uh, you know, for somebody telnetting into your, uh, in, into this system right now, uh, you really feel like you're telnetting inside MVS. And uh, that's exactly what I wanted to achieve here. And as I said, I will continue building this out and release the repository as soon as we have a little bit more capability. Um, I would encourage you to keep uh, checking this channel for a new video on this subject. And if you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe to the Moshix mainframe channel now. Thank you for all the viewing of my videos. Thank you for all the support from the community. Thank you for the uh, many hundreds of messages I receive and emails. Uh, happy you 2023 to all of you and see you soon again.